Most of the exoplanets we know today were discovered using two main techniques, the transit method and the radial velocity method. NASA's Kepler space mission launched in 2009 was a total game changer. Kepler used the transit method, looking at 150,000 stars in a fixed patch of the sky. And when a planet passed in front of its star, even though we couldn't see the planet itself, Kepler detected a tiny dip in the brightness. By measuring how often and how much the light dimmed, scientists could then determine a planet's size, orbit, and even its atmosphere composition in some cases. Kepler alone discovered over 2,600 confirmed exoplanets before retiring in 2018. Absolutely incredible. Now, following Kepler was the Transiting Exoplanetary Survey Satellite, or TESS, which was launched in 2018. Instead of focusing on a single region, TESS scanned almost the entire sky, targeting bright nearby stars, and this allows for more detailed follow-up observations from ground-based telescopes. But transits aren't the only way that we detect exoplanets. The radial velocity method used by European Space Agency's Gaia mission and ground-based observations like HARPS look for tiny wobbles in a star's motion caused by the gravitational tug of orbiting planets. This technique was absolutely crucial in confirming some of Kepler's discoveries and remains one of the best ways to measure a planet's mass. Together, these missions have shown us that planets are everywhere, from giant gas worlds orbiting close to their stars to Earth-like planets and habitable zones. And with new telescopes like JWST and the upcoming Roman Space Telescope, we're just getting started and exploring these alien worlds. I love exoplanets.